Hey guys, so we're finally back. Like I said, guys, sorry for the late response. I wanted to give you guys a different type of breakdown due to the fact that, like I said, this episode had so many different elements of mystery. I gave you guys the first half, which gave us a brief understanding of the Soul King, as well as the history of Yuhabak and Ichibe. That Ichibe have some sort of cahoots with the Soul King and that Ichi, Ichibe is so old to the point where he predates the primordial world. So Yuhabak is upset. Well, we kind of now get why Yuhabak is upset and that the reason why he wants to revert the world where it is um, is due to the fact that each time each time he versus a Quincy dying it kind of resorts him from um, creating more um, more more of himself when it comes to more of his lineage Quincy's and that each time a Quincy died their pain their belief everything that they felt through throughout life goes back to Yuhabak. So now we could actually understand that Yuhabak is not just doing this because he's evil. He's doing this because he's not only the son of the Soul King, but he is the creator or the progenitor, one of the progenitors of all Quincy's. Yuhabak said some very curious but as well as questionable things. He told Ichibe that you know who was the one that created the the three worlds and turned them then into three and Ichibe replies that it was the soul king and the soul king is the reason why those three worlds exist and his job is he has to as the balancer of three worlds so this is predates even the thousand year blood war arc that happened um, a thousand years ago. So Yuhabak with the crazy eyes he had, which from now we know the name of that those eyes are called the Almighty, and that in order for Ichibe to fought Yamamoto, he did not have his eyes, the his real eyes. His real eyes were sealed, and that the only way to get it back is if he dies. So there's so many things, like I said, there will be videos happening after the last two episodes, which will be happening right after this. This is part two of the Thousand Year Blood War Art episode 24, which is titled Too Early to Win, Too Late to Know. This is the second part. The second part, now we're finally getting into the fight of the entire um fight between the royal guards as well as um Yuhabak. Um this is going to be insane and like I said there were so many elements of questions and answers that needs to be questioned. I just am so excited for core 3. Um core 3 will be happening on um October 5th. So I am very excited to 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 join right on schedule so guys without further ado there's so many questions that we're going to be answering after the last two episodes i will make a long hour commentary um i will be uploading it live so it will give you guys a sense of understanding that this was a freaking good core i think this core beats core two by a good margin because the questions that I wanted to hear, I kind of got them, and that it is so cool to see what is actually happening in the Bleach universe and who is responsible. So, funny thing, we haven't heard the the Soul King speaks normal. So it's this is a very gray area, and that the only way the Soul King tend to speak or communicate is through Ichibe. Now I need to know where the royal family fits in all this like the the noble families also the Quincy King as well as you um the soul king the soul king tend to have all the powers of every race of being in the universe and that you even saw that when Ichigo was training 
and that hall, hallway of space, which is called Hirari Sendo, we saw that Ichibe was explaining that you know you're not only carrying the weight of your friends and family to protect, but you're also carrying the weight of the Soul King, his will itself. So, like I said, my questions start coming in now. Is like, is the Soul King alive, or is he dead, or is he stuck in a a um a state of you know dead or alive constantly to to make sure the 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 transfer of souls and everything um goes through there's so many questions but like i said guys without further ado this is going to be part two of too early to um when too late to know um this is the second part of the video and then we're gonna jump into episode 25 and 26 but the way I'm gonna break it down is going to be back to back episodes okay guys so thank you guys so much this is gonna be the start of the fight um, so Hashwalt, Uriu and Yuhabak has arrived at the entrance of the royal palace so guys here it is oh my god I'm so excited alright let's go all right, yo, damn. So it, it seems like they still have those thing called soul dots. Those are the like I guess vice captain level or lieutenant level um, soldiers. Besides the stern raiders that are kind of like captain level. I want to see what he could do. Like Hashwalt is my favorite character in this arc. Besides Yuhabag being the head honcho. I feel him, um, Hashwa is like this, he reminds me of um, the mysteriousness of Ukiyora and he reminds me a little bit of um, the the tone of Haribel. Like both of those characters are very tone characters. Um, they don't do too much but their action speaks louder than words. I love that. So he summons the soul dots. Yo, so the person that's waiting on them at the front of the entrance is Senjumaru Shitara, which is one of the Royal Guard members. Now, we did not see what she's capable of when we when Ichigo was going to each of the palaces, but it seems like she's her 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 background focused on the Shika Shihakaso which is the clothes that the the captains actually wear which is interesting now the it's like she has her own a mosquito like w her own stills force this is crazy yo become the rust of the soul king's blade you guys are more discounted yo my shrift is w nine Weisel, the wind yo Yo. Okay, so he's Stern Ritter W. Yo. Whoa. Yo. Let's go back. Yo. That's crazy. Yeah, she has like needles. It's almost like a thread. No way, it can't. Yo! We apologize. But. Wow, I am loving the. I always say this. I love when they give attention to detail. I'm loving how beautiful and grand the royal palace actually is. Like, it looks so heavenly beautiful from this perspective. And seeing that she's talking down to. Yuhabak, like he just doesn't exist. She said, it seems like our blade can finally reach you. I'm not sure too. This is kind of creepy too. Does Senjumaru has arms or does she has those puppet arms for actual hands? Do you really think so? Whoa! <laughs> I've seen them when Yuhabak was explaining um, about why the Quincy's perish and that the reason why we almost got extinct was due to the whole battle a thousand years ago. 
Udi is the only normal Quincy that was born uh, um, nearly a thousand years ago. He said, my royal guard. So, besides his father, the, the, the soul king has his own royal protection. Yuhabak has his own. Because we've seen these guys were sitting on the podium when Yuhabak was giving his speech of his successor. These guys already, I already knew that automatically I'm like who are they like they look like they separate themselves from there even the clothes that they have it has the same pattern that the giant tower that Yuhabak used to catapult himself up to the royal palace is the same insignia like it's like a six star it's almost six sided insignia this is crazy. This is his Yuha Box Royal Guards. We already know the answer. Yo! Wow. I guess. What? <laughs> Askin is a Royal Guard member. Wow. No wonder. Unless you prove yours, I will cut down this. Yo! He looks like a. Um. Stone Raider W um Stone Raider M um Gerard he looks like a Valkyrie also he looks like Thor I I'm thinking of this right now each of these Quincy's their designs each of them look like they're from a different period of time um Gerard looks very medieval so those Quincy's if you think about it, they look very old like they came from like the prehistoric ages of different parts of of the generation of life because Yuhabak is pretty old himself he's almost a thousand he's a thousand and some change so this is crazy a woman's slender arms cannot play with my words with my sword yo yo she said call out level two this is whoa. It's, oh, you came out with a bleak. <laughs> so, um, Lele Barrow, he, I'm not losing sight of, I've already realized, and I'm reaching it too late. This is crazy. I love the color design. So Little Barrel. So we have another Stark character in our hands. But this time he has a damn freaking freaking um musket. Yo. Yo. I know this was not easy. Is this the best of Squad Zero can do? Yo, they look fire. Yo, okay, let's, we're going to make some comparison to when Aizen summoned Stark Bargain Haribel versus Yuhabak pulling out with his personal squad. This is some, oh, this is getting good. Where were our opponents versus, but we're going to shoot, did he shoot all of the castles? Everything has fallen after you, whoa. Well done. This is a false world palace that's built to lure you in. Yo. I knew this was not going to be easy because they mentioned that the royal guards of the Quincy, uh, of the, um, of the Soul King, they're more powerful than any other, um, generation. I'm not sure if I'm correct. They're stronger than all of the, the generational, um, captain in history. So they might be the first strongest thing ever besides the original Gote 13. Yo, the real one is being worn by Osho. Yo. Yo, first squad officer. The holy guardian of the east. Whoa. I love the introduction. <laughs> Kirinji Tenju, that's me. Royal Guard Office of the Nov, the Great Weaver, Senju Maru Shutora. So she's a weaver. So her ability is like to weave. This is interesting of their, their, 
I love her design, especially. She looks like a thousand arm set jean, right? This is beautiful. Second officer of Holy Garden, King Grand King Kyria. Yo! Yo, the blade. Yo! It's my turn. Yo! Everybody's shock. Wait. It's a blade that is so sharp that ain't no way. Yo! I love the sound. So his 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 blade, I'm assuming um Oetsu doesn't have a natural blade or bunkai. And that's another thing that I need to get into. I know the Royal Guards all have Bunkai. How strong it is, that's a question to be answered. So, Oetsu's blade is so sharp that it can't be contained in a sheath. It has to be in that water substance. Now, is his Bunkai water base? Or is it like a combination of everything? Because he's the blade god. Like, this is insane. Yo, the way he cut that, yo. Yo Yo So So Askin is um, Stun Ritter D Pernita Is the little uh, The little alien thing um, He looks very mysterious Pernita is um, Number Letter C um, M is for Gerard Valkyrie and X which is Lily Barrow. So these four are considered the Royal Guards of Yuhabak. Now where would Uriu and Hashwaltz falls into? That's interesting. Oh my god. Oetsu Namaya kills everybody in one freaking slide. This is crazy. Yo. Yo! So Kirio made a cage that could absorb Reishi, which means that even as they fight, the Reishi absorbing gets stronger. And Yuhabak found a way to get out of it by creating the medallion. I guess this has something to do with Uriu, because Uriu's eyes were kind of like shifting. This is some crazy stuff right now, man. Oh my god, this is good. You will let me through. Yo, this is a fight. As I've chased before many times, you still say my name so lightly. Duh, the animation has increased. Guys, this is about to be a fight. Yuhabak versus Ichibe. Now, we saw what Ichibe did in the past. Where he, I'm not sure if that's like his brush. He made the brush kind of like create this um, illusion wall. And he absorbed all of the techniques that Yuhabak had in his palace. And reflected in uh, his minions. And Yuhabak sealed, Yuhabak's eyes got sealed by Ichibe. And I think Yuhabak, from what Ichibe says, he gave Yuhabak the left hand of the soul king. So I'm assuming when you have a part of the Soul King, um, does that make it even better? Or, you know, how does that work? And also, we saw that the, um, the fight between um, the Royal Guards and everything kind of also um, awakening a lot of things that's going down below the Serite as well. So, Ichibe is not trying to let Yuhabak pass. Um, the fact that it's going to be him versus Yuhabak and that we already know what Yuhabak is capable of after what we saw he did to Yamamoto. But then again, he versus a Royal Guard member which is even stronger than any other captain that is in the Serite. This is crazy because remember the last time we saw someone this powerful and that they couldn't just release their Bankai was due to the fact that they were too powerful. 
was Captain um, Yamamoto. But each Royal Guard member, I'm assuming, has a Bunkai. And that they're so powerful. So, I'm not sure how this is going to work. Um, but guys, can they even still... That's another thing. Yuha Bak said that the only reason why nobody couldn't control um, Yamamoto's Bunkai was due to the fact that you have to be strong enough to control it. But the Royal Guards are even stronger than Yamamoto. So that means can they even control a Royal um, Guard member's Bunkai if they were to try to steal it? That's a lot of questions that's now coming up. Um, but it seems like those Quincy's are now dead. Which is shocking. I don't think they're done. Because Yuhabak haven't even done... Um, you know, he has abilities where he could um, take other people's um, powers. Or I'm not sure if he could bestow powers. Because we know that as a child, he was capable of doing things like that. Um, who knows? This is insane. This is some insane stuff right now. So let us continue and then close out. He said, don't blame me if you lose your voice. Yo. So, Ichibe Hyusube. Guys, the game is, the, the stage is set for Yuha Bakta versus Ichibe and the Royal Guards versus Uriyu and Hash. Now, I'm praying to see what Hashwell could do because we saw a little bit of what he could do where he's able to split the entire position of which Quincy that lose and gets executed and he created this ability where it's like the fortune and misfortune are able to tip or balance out the wins um, this is on some insane level so the Royal Guards are now here to versus Uriu and Hashwa and Yuhabak now versus um, the monk, Monko Osho, which is Ichibe Hyosobe. This is gonna be, oh my god. Guys, thank you guys so, so much. This is the start of the fight and we already saw the Royal Guards are not to fuck with. They're super strong. Just one of them knocked out four of the Royal Guards of Yuha. And it took him less than a minute. And I'm not sure if his sword cancels other people's abilities. Or is it just because it's super sharp. There's a lot of questions and answers. But thank you guys so much. This is was part 2 of episode 24. Which is titled... Too early to win, too too late to know. So this is a double atantra, I think, which we might see the royal guards come back. I know for a fact that um, Askin Askin didn't get hurt that much, um, but we're gonna see. This is gonna be insane. Thank you guys so much. Like and subscribe as we now close out. The last two episodes will be combined in a way where the first half will be the full fight of the Royal Guards. And then the second half will be closing out with Ichibe Hyosobe versus Yuha Bak. Thank you guys so much. Like and subscribe. And the last two episodes will be titled The Master and Black. Bye bye and have a good day.